right students let's continue with our non random sampling uh, we uh, did discuss in the last video the judgment sampling purposive sampling you can also call let's move on to the next one the next one uh, on our radar is quota sampling students quota sampling to start with the sampling students the best way to understand this one is to recall the stratified sampling which you did under restricted random sampling now if you remember that one uh, students if you go through the same example if i remember thoroughly there were around 500 households in the city and we were trying to find out the average income of the household i'm just making a little bit of change it was almost on the similar lines so you just verify it we can take a sample of 100 households instead of all 500 we'll take 100 and generalize the result so what we did was uh, we took around 30 from the rich segment right let's say for example 40 from the middle class one and remaining 30 can be taken from the lower middle class or the uh, poor section as such which is not earning good enough in comparison to these as such clear now 100 households taken they are taken on the basis of percentage of what they are so if, if i have taken 30 out of 100 that means 30 percent of all 500 households are rich 40 percent of all 500 household are middle class so i have taken 40 as such now what i did in stratified sampling if you remember students whatever 30 households are to be taken right whatever 30 rich are to be taken all 30 can be taken randomly as a part of stratified sampling so it was restricted random it was restricted to start with but after that it became random in picking 30 rich households here also 40 randomly picked households were taken but if you go into this type of sampling which is quota sampling even this 30 rich who are to be picked right out of overall rich now overall rich in the city might be 150 because 30 of 100 makes up 30 percent so out of 500 150 must be the overall rich households whatever 30 rich households will be picked they will be picked on the basis of the understanding as well as the acumen of the investigator or the enumerator they will not be randomly picked so the basic difference which lies between quota and the stratified sampling is that stratified sampling in its advanced form where little bit of judgment sampling comes in it becomes quota sampling to start with it is stratified and then it becomes judgment so it is a combination of stratified as well as judgment sampling is what you call it as the quota sampling am i clear with students now what are its benefit if done nicely it can give you dependable result much more dependable than the other form but provided there is no bias involved and that's where the problem lies at times the bias can be there on top of it sampling errors may arise now sampling errors students arise naturally because census cannot be replaced census is the best way to conduct but it is time consuming it is also requiring a lot of money to be spent it also requires a lot of money to be spent so what is the alternate way the alternate way is sampling but in doing sampling there will be possibility of certain sampling errors because you can't compare a small size or a small sample giving you absolutely the accurate result which a census would do so definitely there will be sampling error which becomes quite difficult in quota sampling to manage so another uh, point to be taken which is the negative one apart from the bias which i have not mentioned here because it is the common thing which happens with all non-random sampling uh, methods remember it bias is common i have added one more uh, possibility it is difficult to eliminate all the sampling error and estimate as well 
I hope all of you have understood it. Quota sampling, another method of non-random sampling. Thank you.